Hello, everyone. Mr. Stearns here. Hey, evidence folder six, lesson 15, learning about world religions, Hinduism. As you've already figured out, we're kind of coming to a close here. And you notice that we're starting to emphasize a little bit more about writing. Okay, one of the things I really feel that you're going to miss this year is your in-depth writing uh, in social studies. So I want you to really think about that. And if you're in a good place to really focus in on your writing, that might put you in a better situation for next year. So this is really meant for those students who are ready to push themselves as far as SS, essay writing goes, okay? So we know that our essay for um, our test um, for Hinduism is going to be about Dharma, okay? So how do you get beyond just writing one sentence in an essay? I wanted to kind of take a moment just to kind of get you started thinking about that. Okay, so what do you see? Do you notice how I'm going first to my table of contents and I'm looking to see what the main points are for Hinduism? I'm looking to see where Dharma fits in. Now I'm gonna click over here and look at my essential questions. What are the origins and beliefs of Hinduism? Does Dharma have to do with origins of Hinduism? I think in a way, sort of, but I think it really falls more toward this end of the essential question. It's one of the central beliefs of Hinduism. As a matter of fact, I would probably say it's key in Hinduism. Okay, look at where Dharma is. Look at how Dharma connects to social structure, Brahman, deities or avatars, gods, karma, samsara. Your job is to explain to me or the reader of your essay, how does Dharma fit into this whole concept of Hinduism and reincarnation and rebirth and whatnot? Okay. How do you do that? Okay. Well, what I would first do is I would say, okay, what is the essay question? Um, explain the importance of Dharma uh, as it relates to Hinduism. So what do you have to do? You have to ex define what Dharma is in Hinduism. Remember, Dharma is different in different religions. So make sure if you're doing research, you're focusing on Indian Dharma, okay, from India, all right? But I would definitely, before you write, you have to have a really good idea of how Hinduism started because that's going to connect to what Dharma is. Do you see how they're directly tied to each other? Notice that when they did this lesson or chapter, they started out with the origins or kind of an overview of Hinduism and then connected, connected the specific beliefs. And then I'm asking you to think about the origins of Hinduism. Think about the social structure. We called it the caste system before, but Hindus don't like that, that concept of caste because it doesn't really capture the whole idea of many lifetimes. Okay. Brahman, the ultimate force, avatars of Brahman, connect directly to what Dharma is. What is Dharma? I guess that's the key, okay? Definitely. Um, so let's take a look at that section here. Okay, so I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna double check this. If I know that my essay is about Dharma, I'm gonna go back and rethink this. Okay, Dharma is the central concept in Hinduism and other Indian traditions. Dharma is often described as duty. However, that's not really the best way to explain it. It's not the best word, but I think that's one of the, I, I don't even know if we have a word to really justify what that really means. Okay, however, it is a way of life, Dharma is that helps people live happily, selflessly, and in balance. For Hindus, achieving Dharma is one of the most important goals in life, alongside Kama, which is love, Artha, which is wealth, Moksha, which is oneness with God. Moksha is the breaking of the cycle, called Samsara. Once you break the cycle, you're said to have achieved Moksha, and you become one with the eternal force and energy. Kind of like those dandelion seeds in the movie Avatar that are floating around. Okay. As you have already read, according to the Vedas or the important 
um, I guess you would say texts. Each social class or varna has its own duty or responsibility. These duties usually involve a certain type of work. Duties might include studying religious texts, herding animals, trading goods, or serving as a warrior. Therefore, each class or each varna, each varna was seen as having its own separate dharma. Okay, so if you're a kshatriyas, you have a responsibility, a duty as a kshatriyas. Okay, but the other side of dharma is when you step back, you also have another dharma for the whole group. So you have a you have dharma for your specific varna, which would be your caste. What we would say caste but we know that the Hindus don't particularly like that word or it doesn't really fit from their perspective. Okay, but I'm trying to tie it into Egypt and Pharaoh, feel me? Okay, all right. So what I want you to really think about is early Hindus believed that when everyone followed the Dharma of their Varna, society would be in harmony. Okay, so if everybody did their job at each level, everything's gonna run fine. People say, well, why don't the people at the bottom revolt? Because that's not fair. You've got to remember, you're thinking about fairness from our one body lifetime. Okay, they're not talking about a lifetime as, as the idea of a body. Like for, our, for us, we would say monotheistic religions, this body has maybe 70 to 90 or 100 years even. But after that's done, then it's gone, then it's done. That's not what Hindus believe at all. They believe the soul is the lifetime and your soul goes through many different bodies or different forms, depending on your karma, right? All right, so now I'm gonna go down to the next blue and I'm still thinking to myself because I'm doing some initial research, that's what this is. Before I wanna make any connection, I wanna go back and rethink and reread. Look at the main points. In addition to the following, in addition to the following, the Dharma of their own, of following their own rules for their caste, Hindus had an expectation to also, um, they had a duty not just to their class, but to the whole society as well, okay? And that would be a really good reason why you wouldn't revolt at the bottom of the social pyramid. As a matter of fact, Hindus would say they're all equal. It's not fair to say that one's better than the other. Do you feel me? Okay, so be careful that you don't view this from your own personal perspective. You've got to view this from a third person Hindu perspective. Another basic value inv involves nonviolence. Many Hindus, as well as followers of other traditions, have respect for life that stems from the belief that all form life forms have a soul. All life forms, not just human forms. Okay, so a turtle has a soul, Atman. Okay, does a rock have a soul? I don't know if a rock, I think that's an inanimate object. It doesn't breathe, it doesn't live. I could be wrong from a Hindu point of view. But I don't think that that is a life form per se. But a tree is because that's a living thing. Okay. So, and that's one of the reasons why when you hear holy cow, cows are sacred in um, India. Okay. I don't know if this gives me enough information to really write a solid essay. That's why I connect you to all those other movies. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is since I'm not feeling like I have a really good idea, I'm going to do some general research on Hinduism. That's important that I note that. Dharma, and I want to make sure I'm spelling that right. And what I like to do is I like to write for kids because then it's going to find the specific videos that are meant to help kids understand what Dharma means in Hinduism. Okay? A lot of times you come up with cartoons and things like that. So I really learn better from videos. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for a video that I trust. Now, I've been doing this for a long time, so I know a lot of these websites. Okay, study.com. Come on, you know that that's a great one. How about, what's that other one where um, uh, Khan Academy has really good stuff too? Okay, I like this one. How about this? Let's go to this one. Um, again, I'm not going to copy this word for word. I'm going to watch a couple of videos and kind of make a decision and start to think about how am I going to write my essay? What are the important concepts that I really need to bring out? So I'm going to go and I'm going to watch this. Dharma is an important concept found in many spiritual philosophies from the Indian subcontinent, including Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, and Sikhism. In Hinduism, Dharma is simultaneously the eternal order that rules the universe and the duty or law that governs one's life. 
Fulfilling one's dharma is more than simply one's purpose in life. It is considered the very means by which one transcends suffering and the cycle of birth and death, or what is called samsara. A person has social, political, and familial dharmas, but most important is one's spiritual dharma. In the Bhagavad Gita, one of India's most sacred texts, the popular deity Krishna teaches that it is our highest dharma to achieve spiritual understanding, which means to realize our true self as the Atman, the Supreme Consciousness, and to cultivate a relationship with the Divine. Dharma is considered one of the three jewels of Buddhism, along with the Sangha, or community of practitioners, and the Buddha, or the enlightened state. Dharma most frequently refers to the Buddhist teachings on liberation. One said, Teachings on liberation, freeing the Atman from the cycle of reincarnation or samsara. That's what Dharma is. Okay, think about that. What is your responsibility in this situation? That's what's going to free you. Teaching is called the Four Noble Truths. It states, one, that there is suffering and dissatisfaction in the world. Now that moves on to Buddhism. So you have to be careful as you study. You have to have an idea. I know that the Four Noble Truths have to do with Buddhism. So it was the first part of that video that was really important. Okay, do you see how if you're not paying attention, you're going to be studying the wrong thing? So let's go back. The very beginning of that was really important. I'm going to go back and I'm going to take a look at... Um, let me see. Let's do Hinduism again. Again, Hinduism, and let's do Dharma. Okay, and I'm going to just do that. Okay, and I'm not going to write for kids this time. I'm going to see what else happens. I love this person. So I know that she's a reputable source. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to take a, take a look at what she has to say about Dharma. Okay, and this was also something that we, we looked at earlier. Let me go back. I apologize. Here we go. Namaste, friends. Today, we are going to discuss one of the most important concepts of Hinduism, Dharma. Dharma is the foundation of many religions such as Hinduism, Sikhism, Jainism, and Buddhism, which is why these religions are open. So if I were writing an essay, I might want to start out. You know how Mr. Lintz is talking about introductions? Okay, you need to introduce your reader to the whole idea of what you're going to write about. Okay, so you could start out saying, look, Dharma is a concept that goes across many religions. Okay, and they just talked about several of them. Okay, so that's a good way to lead into it. It's like lending credibility to your own thinking. Look, Dharma is a concept out there, not just for one religion, but for many. Okay, so you have to understand what Dharma means in different contexts, okay? Because it means slightly different things when you get to Buddhism. So focus in on Hinduism. Also for Dharmic religion. Dharma was originally derived from the Sanskrit word Dhri, which meant to pure or support. The original name of Hinduism is actually Sanatan Dharma, which meant the universal order or the eternal natural being, which has made the universe and life possible. Think about it. There are laws that ensure that planets rotate and revolve in an effective orbit and do not collapse with each other. Cycles such as water cycle, carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle all work properly. Animals participate in food webs and food chains and maintain ecological balance. We call all these laws as dharma. Dharma also means inherent nature or characteristics. Fire dharma is to work, water dharma is to moisten, and earth dharma is to bear the weight and provide all necessities to enable life. Tree dharma is to provide fresh air and shade, lion dharma is to pray, and a bee dharma is to pollinate. In short, all living and non living entities are supposed to fulfill their dharma in order to make life and universe possible. Now, humans are special and unusual creatures with unconceivable potential and extraordinary capabilities, all starting from 
from our extraordinary brain, our ability to talk, our object posture, and our opposing tongue. These gifts have allowed us to change our world dramatically. Because of such combination of special traits and capabilities, humans have established primary importance among other creatures in nature. As you may know, with great power comes great responsibility. And there's a lot more to Dharma. Okay, so that's just to get you starting to think about that. Notice that I'm going to several different. The first ones when you do a search usually come up with the most popular. Doesn't mean that they're the most credible. It just means they're the most viewed. Okay, so stop and look at these things. Okay, well, I'm looking to see where can we find, I'm going to go back to four kids because I don't feel like I have a enough information. You know what I could use? Oh, this might be a really good one. We'll probably be a big alien. In fact, other than the word karma, I'm betting most of the terms will be new. In order to help these new concepts stick, we'll try our best to link them to the familiar. As we do this, please remember we'll be doing some real oversimplification while merely scratching the surface of an ancient faith. With that warning of sorts, let's get going on our terms. We'll start with Atman. Atman basically means your eternal self, the spiritual essence of who you are. It's not the body you inhabit, nor is it the sum total of your material possessions. It is the spiritual you. For our purposes, we can try to remember this with a sort of play on words. Saying Atman is the spiritual essence of who I am. Our closest match to Atman is probably our use of the word soul. However, there are some huge differences. For instance, the Western Judeo-Christian system tends to believe when a person dies, their soul travels on to heaven or hell. In other words, paradise or eternal suffering are the end of the road. This is not the case with Hinduism's Atman. Instead, it is believed that a person's Atman is reincarnated, only to be held in another physical, but again temporary body. Looks like Mr. Stearns is uh, meditating. Reincarnation leads us to our next Hindu term, karma. Lucky for us, this one is a bit more familiar. In very simplified terms, karma is a Hindu belief system that a person's actions in life will determine their fate in the next life. If a person is kind and selfless in this life, they'll be rewarded in the next. Unfortunately, the opposite is also true. If a person is a scoundrel today, let's just say they'll be paying for it in their next tomorrow. Although our culture doesn't always use the word karma, vestiges in it are apparent in phrases like, what goes around comes around, or he sure got what was coming to him. Building on the idea that actions affect life, our next to deter is dharma. Here we go. Especially important in the Hindu faith, but probably the most airy to Western mind. For this reason, we'll give a simple definition, then come back around and try to make it stick. As for the definition, Dharma is the moral force that orders the universe. It's the power that keeps the world in motion and keeps society together. It keeps the trees blooming, the grass growing, and the birds singing. However, Dharma is maintained through personal duty. Simply put, it's up to humans to do their part to keep the world operating smoothly. With this, Dharma is both universal and circumstantial or personal. I know this seems rather confusing, so I'll come at it using a tangible example. Most states hold to the idea that murder is wrong. Across the board, it's usually a no-no and would go against Dharma. However, sometimes murder may be necessary for the greater good. For instance, what if a king kills a few people in order to avoid an all-out war? Although this is a rather violent argument on the use of personal dharma, it's a famous one taken right from the pages of the ancient Hindu story about dharma known as the Bhagavad Gita. In this Hindu classic, a ruler's crown is challenged by rebellion. Since the ruler... Notice something here, guys. Do you notice how they use an example to get the reader to understand that they understand what dharma is. When you write an essay, don't just write down what you think your answer is. Follow it up with another paragraph and use an example. 
Like when you say blah, blah, Dharma is blah, 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 blah. Give me a life example. Okay. For instance, in our life at school, you could kind of see that as blah, 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 blah. Do you see it's your job to get across the definition, but then to bring it to life? And that is usually through examples or opinions based on evidence. Let's go back and see what they have to say about the Bhagavad Gita. The new murder was wrong. He put down his weapons and refused to kill the rebels. However, the god Vishnu appeared and told him it was his personal duty or dharma to kill his enemies in order to protect his people and bring peace to his land. Yes, senseless murder would go against the universal idea of dharma, but in this story, it was the honorable ruler's personal duty or dharma to kill. With this in mind, we can simplify and remember dharma by saying it's a person's individual duty in life. To use some alliteration, dharma equals duty. This brings us to the last RPG terms, moksha. Notice that I'm going beyond just the word dharma, because when you're trying to explain it, there are different levels of knowledge and understanding. Okay, and as a teacher, what I'm looking for is, do you see the connection between beliefs? Notice that most of the students are only going to talk about the definition of Dharma, but I'm looking for my starting quarterback. My starting quarterback is going to go beyond that. They're going to define what Dharma is in Hinduism. They're probably going to give some examples, and then they're going to explain how Dharma connects to the soul, Atman, and it connects to um, karma, and it connects to the cycle of samsara, and to this next one. How do you break the cycle of samsara in Hinduism? Okay, It's not just enough to give a definition, guys. You need to make the connection. That's the difference between uh, a deep A and a surface level A. Okay? Fitting nicely in last place, moksha can be very, very, very loosely compared to the Christian heaven. In short, it's the liberation from the cycle of birth and reincarnation. It's a prize at the end of the very long Hindu road. As a person's atman or soul passes through the cycles of life and reincarnation, it is supposed to learn freedom from ignorance, selfishness, and many other negative human traits. When this is finally accomplished, a person's atman can rise above the need to be reborn. Therefore, the cycle of reincarnation will end, and the person's atman is released to transcend beyond the human existence. In Hinduism, this is the ultimate goal, or to use some alliteration, moksha is the main goal. Although rather poor to Western thought, Hinduism holds tightly to a belief in Atman, Karma, Dharma, and Moksha. Do you see how this can actually be a really good study strategy for writing your essay? Do you see how you should be talking about Atman, Karma, Dharma, and Moksha? That's the difference between surface level understanding and deep level understanding of Karma, Dharma, and all the rest of them. How do they work together? That's the key. That's what I need you to explain to me. And do you see how you can't do that in one sentence? I mean, look at the way this is set up. You're looking at at least a paragraph on Atman, a paragraph on Karma, a paragraph on Dharma, and Moksha. That's four paragraphs right there. Is there any way you can connect them? I might connect the soul with, I don't know, I'd do a paragraph on the soul by itself, Atman. I might connect karma and dharma. I'm not sure. And then I might end it with moksha. That might be the way I set up my essay. Okay, if I were doing a decent essay, I might want to talk about uh, dharma is an important belief in Hinduism. It connects to Atman, and then I'd explain Atman, give an example, et cetera, et cetera, which impacts the whole idea of karma. And then I would talk about karma being action, which connects to Dharma, and I would say how that connects, and then how that relates to the whole idea of being freed from the cycle of samsara known as moksha. Again, there's a lot to writing an essay, so I'm gonna do you a favor. 
I'm going to allow you to write your essay ahead of time, this time, because I want you to see how you can write a deep essay instead of a one sentence answer on a test. And as you're studying for this essay, notice how your score goes up on the test. If you're studying for this essay, you're naturally studying for the test. Why do you think processing comes at the end of the ISN? All right, so you may write your essay ahead of time, okay? You may, please go right ahead and then you can just copy and paste it in. I wasn't gonna let you do that, but I thought about that. A student brought that up the other day and I got to thinking about it, sleeping on it. And I thought, well, you know, that's a pretty good idea because we're trying to get kids to go deeper in their writing and you're not. So let's give you the opportunity and let's see who my starting quarterback is. Who are the people who are gonna watch this video? I'll check. Who are the people that are gonna write their essay ahead of time? I'll check. I know it takes time, but the time you invest up front is gonna save you time and give you confidence on the test instead of you freaking out. So instead of just studying for the test, try to study this way. Write your essay ahead of time and use that as your study guide. And then watch how well you do on the test. Because if you can write a great essay on Dharma, a long essay, one that has examples, you should be just fine on this test. Okay, because all multiple choice questions connect to these four words. All right, guys, I sure talked a lot. That's about six minutes and 30 seconds. I'll talk to you guys later. I don't know if that's right. Good luck on the test, guys. You may write your uh, essay ahead of time and just copy and paste.